is you interlock the two. Now stretch them quite as well. Soccer and the fifth. Quiet, please. In exactly 15 seconds, we'll be on the air. I felt like a reptile. Like a reptile. I felt like a reptile. Easy fellas. Hi right, boys. How you doing? Easy mate. Uh, welcome to Full Reptile Radio. We're upstairs today because we are waiting for the new, uh, and it almost said Xbox, PlayStation to update. It says it's got five minutes left, but it said that ten minutes ago. Yes, it has gone full snatch, Turkish. So, um, <laughs> here we are, four of us. Brought the Raptors in. Brought the Raptors in. Well, Vegas stories. This is it? Yeah. Because, you know, I need to tell you some fucking stories about these boys from Vegas. This is a grilling down, is it? Is this a performance review? <laughs> I've been waiting to tell you this story since it happened. It was hilarious. Um, Jump straight in. Are we going straight yeah, into it? Yeah, fuck it. Go on. How have you been, first of all? Good, Cause, man. Because you stayed home, didn't Busy. you, this time around? Yeah, it was... Uh, you had grown-up responsibilities. I like, did. Like families and jobs and stuff. Yeah, and it was, it was a weird one because my wife got, not rushed to hospital, but was advised, go hospital. Hurried. Yeah, hu- literally hurried, and that was the day you were all flying. So I sat there with like Joey and friends at the window, crying my- to myself, <laughs> <laughs> memories. And I was looking at my phone and all the stories of people on planes and landing, touching down and getting over there. And I was like, no, no, it's the right thing. I did the right thing. Everything's good. And then Stace gets <laughs> this phone call from the doctors. And it's all sorted now. Everything's good. But we spent something like 500 hours in A&E and just it was bonkers. So I've been busy with work from Black Friday, but also... Surprisingly, we're celebrity spotting in Derby A and E. Oh, were you? Yeah. At like three a.m. Because you get a lot of celebrities in Derby A and E, do you? Oh, mate. At what three a.m.? Yeah. I I think I was slightly Who delirious. Did you see then? John Goodman. John Goodman. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Gandalf. What, These are Ian, Ian McKellen. Ian McKellen. You saw it. It was all a smaller version, like a Derby version. This, but this, because this I was, start, this is, hang on, this is starting to remind me of a Catherine Tate sketch. Honestly, dude, you know, you know the burger van sketch. Yeah. Have you have you seen Catherine oh, Tate? Oh yeah, where she's yeah, morning yeah, yeah. Neville. Yeah. <laughs> she's always got some outlandish story of someone that dude. she met on the. Anyway. Yeah, this was complete from like delirium because so, we hadn't so had any sleep. Who's Gan- John Goodman? Who is that? John Goodman's weird. John bro. Goodman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who's, what? What's on called books? John Goodman's that's. Oh, uh, John, yeah, Roseanne, John Candy. not John Candy, Roseanne's John. fellow. Who's John Roseanne's fellow? Who was I in? Google. Who was in uh, the Flintstones? Oh, no, no, it, John. I know you, you didn't mean. see him in fucking Derby. Eh, I haven't seen any of these. I was going to tell you, <laughs> I, I see Jimmy say, Nail. We were singing <laughs> Crocodile Shoes for four hours because he was in uh, thing it. Big Lebowski. That's it. Yeah. I so I was thinking, surely that can't be the same. Person. Yeah, exactly. Okay. He so was he, Darby, he was there, A&E, was he? and then this guy came out. And now bear in mind, whenever you're in A and E. Whenever you're in any, doesn't matter if you've got a severed head or you've got a splinter, no one else should be there in your opinion because it's like you're just wasting the fucking NHS time. Someone comes in with like a pimple or with a yeah. fucking rash on the tongue, they're not, they're not dying. I am. I want to go first <laughs> because it was four hours. We were fuming by this point, and this guy walked out like cucumbers are cool, but fucking Cuthbert was the coolest. Do you know what I mean? He came out dressed as Antonio Banderas from the, like 1993. <laughs> He had full tilt pointy shit kicker shoes, crocodile skin, and then he had faux crocodile skin trousers. Oh, dickhead. And he was trying to billy walk. He was trying to do his Conor McGregor walk through the hospital. When he'd cl- first. Yeah. But he'd clearly had something up his ass. Ooh. So now he was Is walking. Is that why he was at A&E? Yeah, he was walking like and a bandy leg forward. Like a bottle of ketchup or something. Exactly. Yeah. I, if he'd have stood in an alley, he wouldn't have stopped a pig running through his legs. <laughs> Basically. Hang on, hang on. Say that one more time. He wouldn't stop a pig in an alley. Okay. For other people, it, an alley, <laughs> it, it could be called a jitty or a genel or a genel, where a basically... What? A genel? A genel, that's another word for between two houses. Is it? Yeah, you know, genel. what do you call it? A jitty? Uh, just a alleyway. A, a, no. A, 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 an, alley, an, alley, an, an alleyway. An alleyway, yeah. Alleyway, yeah. Alleyway, yeah. So, jitty, alleyway. Twitchel. Yeah, genel, genel. I don't know. I feel like that might, might be a word that's made up. Twitchel. I'm going to Google that as well. Well, yeah, Thank so goodness for Google, hey. His trousers forced oh, surely, us to sing surely that's, Crocodile surely Shoes. Surely like, this should be part of your remit. It's part of your job is Googling shit. 
Yeah. I'm doing well, this. Stuff well, they are called Jamie. Like, exactly. I mean, like we discussed. <laughs> Bring it up, the, Jamie. We discussed for ages Twitching. that we needed a Twitchel. Twitchel. Oh. Before we hatched you, we said we needed Jamie's. <laughs> <laughs> How would you spell Twitchel? I don't Double know. L. Yeah. Well. Okay. There we go. Now it's asking for my location. You don't need to know my location. Um. So um. So what what's been happening? So what you missed? You missed Vegas. You missed Vegas. I did you? miss Vegas. But that's all right because oh no, it's only in the Urban Dictionary. If it's anything to do with poo going in a freezer inside a condom, don't keep reading. I'm, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> don't Google space docking. I don't. I don't even. It's, it's grim. You, you've already that. derailed bad, the really. podcast. So bad. Some poo, poo stories. We're stopping there you go. right there. It was a frozen. It's poo. Christmas. We need no unless it's reindeer shit. I'm not interested. <laughs> it can be. It can be, but that's very artisan. The yeah. worst was uh, <laughs> lemon party dot. Oh, quick, quick lemon story. Lemon party story. We went to a gaming convention with my brother-in-law, and there was these massive screens. It was when like massive plasma screens came out, and we were there to play the new Call of Duty. And basically, we were walking around, and my my brother-in-law is a bit of a tech geek. Realised that the there was a certain computer that was linked to the projectors and the screens, and all he did was go up and search lemonparty.org, which is essentially a gangbang with five old white dudes kissing each other's tail. It's grim, <laughs> but Rich typed it in. It came up on the screen and just walked off. And I was like, "Dude, there's kids here, man." And he was like, "Oh fuck them, they're all right." It's it's gross. So don't Google that. Yeah, we used to do that at school when the teacher would go out and she'd leave a computer on on the wall. We'd just put lemon party. <laughs> Wait for Hit enter. Come in. <laughs> yeah. no, that's bad, man. Yeah. How, how have we got here already? I don't know. We, take, we took a nosedive. It's this end of the set. It is. It is. <laughs> Apologies. It is. Can we? Can we just? We'll just. Cut. It is actually. It's so <laughs> it's actually two seats. It's actually, we need to drag ourselves away. Just slide over this here. Is, we can I'm just a little bit let that that drift away. We can just, yeah, you're a little bit. I'm expecting a few crass comments. Anyway. I've got to tell you this Vegas story. Tell me. I can't so, wait. As you know, marijuana is legal in, in Las Vegas. God bless. Um, and we'd gone to the one of the dispensaries and these raptors had picked up some <laughs> syringe with some oil in. <clears throat> Upon returning to the house one night, I walked in the front door and I have the photo so we can post it up on... Uh, yep, 100%. Thing. As we walked in the front door, the first thing I see is Mystery sat on the sofa in this big room with a massive teddy bear on top of him <laughs> just stretched out on a sofa like that <laughs> a massive teddy bear on top of him the like as big as him from? Well, it was it was in the house oh the was so, that the, I'm about to say you know if you've gone on a mad spending so, spree oh, sorry I should have set the scene the reptile house so yes. if you've not seen it there's there's a load of stuff on the YouTube channel of um, well there's the, the vlog and there's the PI stuff and a bunch of stuff Batcave one coming out soon Batcave well. one coming out soon that's good -da 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 -da. Um, so we're in the reptile house the Airbnb that we got in uh, in Vegas which was pretty awesome with the swan in the pool man um, <laughs> and um, I, I walked in so Mystery was under this sofa and I'm like under this uh, this bear on the sofa and I'm looking around I'm thinking What's going on here? Where is everybody else? The house was way too quiet. It's so at, soft. At, at no point in the, in the whole week had the house been that quiet. So I walk in and I'm like looking around. Then all of a sudden, there's a bit of a rumbling, and Wad comes out of the bathroom like like white as a ghost, like like candle wax, like he was Madame Two Two Swords. <laughs> Fucking walked out and he was like struggling to move, and his eyes were like all puffy and stuff and then he just leant against the door frame and started giggling <laughs> and he and he just he couldn't just couldn't gone. hold it together gone and then this one comes out like the like the fucking living dead <laughs> <laughs> and it was like it was like he just he wasn't even like acknowledging anybody was there he was just kind of walked out and he was still staring at the floor <laughs> and i got a video of the three of them mystery still sitting under this teddy bear and then these two just standing in the corridor Wad leaned up against the wall giggling and Jamie just living dead staring at the floor <laughs> it was it was dangerous shit what was it some kind of oil you got to talk into that motherfucker I am I you pointed, pointed it I, I pointed it away from my laugh just to say <laughs> <laughs> people like your laugh it's endearing She's is signature. it endearing uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a twitter poll yeah don't well <laughs> The thing with that is, um, 
before before we had even decided to take the edibles, me, Jamie, and yourself had decided that when you get back, we're going to do a war room. Yeah. Mm. So I, I, this was in my head the whole time. And then I, I'm sat next to Wad, who's Dan's manager, and many of other things. Um, <laughs> all good. All good, all good for sure. The grown-up, the, the, yeah. you know, the designated yeah. adult. Full adult. adult. <laughs> For real. And the grown-up is sat next to me and he's just you like, oh, do you want it? Yeah, I can hear. Does it sound, sound all right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, so Wad decided to have an edible and him being the sensible one of the group, he knew we were supposed to be working as well. I was like, mm, all right, I'll have one if you're having one. <laughs> and then I stopped him and I decided to get out the syringe. Uh-huh. And the syringe is treated well they they use it out there for patients with cancer right. and to numb the pain that's what the guy said to me so i was like i'll take that <laughs> <laughs> two uh, please <laughs> <laughs> and then before we knew it like i mean i must have put on like a nice big thumbnail i'd say like well. we had a third of what the contents was each so maybe a hundred mg a little bit more probably more <laughs> what did you put it on on a cookie, yeah, <laughs> and a little cookie. Cookies. On one of those amazing yeah. vegan cookies mm. from Whole Foods. And, and then, oh, so, shit. it must have Probably been like... the first time it's been used as a vessel for drugs. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> we, were watching, we were watching loads of Kirby Enthusiasm, and then the next thing, we were just, we were just all of us, we were just so lit. And, <laughs> and I was just like, damn, we've got to record this pod... Uh, we've got to record a war room. And so everybody was kind of like trailing off into their room, and I was like, "Man, if Dan comes home and we're all asleep, and we're getting like, it'd probably be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> probably be in trouble." Yeah, well, this is what was going through my head at the time. I was like, started to get really paranoid. <laughs> so I thought, "Well, I know what I'll do is I'll just, I'll die near the set." <laughs> <laughs> so it seems, yeah, that's like true. Prepared. The set was set up. Yeah, as it was. Yeah, yeah, I put my toe on record this was before we had it. It could well, wake me up. <laughs> That was it because I got back and I walked over to him and obviously I'm filming I'm videoing of course this. I'll show you the video and I'm, I'm walking over and I'm filming and he's just sitting on the chair on the chair and he's like we can do the warm if you want you might have to press record <laughs> <laughs> I'm like what the fuck has happened here it was hilarious one of yeah. my one of my favourite mem- memories from first time Vegas was following Mystery back to the hotel room or well, oh, the hotel rooms when we were going home the day after so we had essentially gone out we were pretty baked and just following you back all the way through the casino, just losing it. And it was just this like fucking gangly insect man <laughs> walking through. And I'm still behind Dan's filming that. And I was like, this isn't real. This isn't real. But yeah. When was that? Was that on the last was day? the last day before yeah, we came over yeah. One thing that as well, because before you left, you asked if we could pick Nick up yeah. from the airport yeah. as well. I heard that on their podcast. And they said the Raptors were meant to pick us up. Is that right? Dan came for me in the end. Yeah. And we, we got home and they were a melted mess. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. They were just a mess. Is that what yeah, they said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, because yeah, I wasn't sure whether I was going to be back. So I said, to, I said to these two, I said to you first, so you, you were in the kitchen. Well, I you said, know, I didn't have a license anyway, so it wasn't directed well, no, at me. No. So I was like, I'm sure we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> 100 no, percent full well that you yeah. all just had all this oil on these <laughs> on these cookies i said to, i said to mystery if i'm not back by 10 30 will you go and pick nick up from the airport and mystery was like yeah, yeah yeah of course and i thought i'm just gonna double check with somebody else in the group so you and you were sat on the sofa and i said to you are you all right to drive to the airport because uh, i didn't realize you're down the edibles or anything like that. i said you're right to uh, nip, nip and pick nick up and you were like yeah yeah no problem this was before it properly hit before it properly hit and then when did paranoia around, stand, yeah, start like, kicking there and you thought but drive. what was even funnier is that they're having a conversation over WhatsApp with Nick, who's now at to the the arrivals area at the airport, about is Dan coming to pick you up, and then not checking their phone because they're afraid of the reply being no, <laughs> coming. If, if we don't look, if we don't look, it doesn't what count. What a mess. Fuming, didn't see it. You actually messaged Nick, <laughs> didn't you? Like, yeah, I did. Terminal I just, one, yeah. I just. <laughs> <laughs> Like, no, terminal three. <laughs> yeah, I was just checking the terminal number, but obviously it was wrong. With no then, intention yeah. of going no. to pick him up. <laughs> you couldn't even stand up. Sat on a settee spinning oh, car keys. Man. Brilliant. There was such an easy solution to that as yeah. well, but it just felt like we were trying Brain to decipher the Da Vinci code. <laughs> like, Dan, can you do it? It's like, well, we could have just got him an Uber. Just call me when you get here, we'll book you an Uber. Everyone chill out. Yeah. It's, instead, it was just Why did you not get to that conclusion? 
Because I, so I, much going on. My reaction really. was based off everyone else, and Wad was being like stressing out, and then I could tell you would just went all insular and <laughs> just weird. So then I was just half oh, off. Fuck's sake! <laughs> <laughs> Four hours left. Yeah, it's all right. It's get, it'll jump to eight in about two minutes. Will it? Yeah. Jesus. But it's worth it. Is it? Yeah. What are you downloading? Um, That's yeah. just installing COD. COD. Um, what else is to talk about? The we haven't talked about the fights, yeah. yeah. What, do, you want to talk, do you want to talk about the Vegas fights first? Dude. What do you reckon? I do. Good I've stoppage. Some, Main I've event, got, good stoppage, bad got stoppage. Some. Yeah, but fine. Okay, good. good. It's fine. We don't need to, we don't need to go Cobby's just bitching, trying to get a rematch. It's the best thing that could have happened for him. It gave him a reason to be pissed yeah. off that it wasn't... If it wasn't that, it would have been the decision <laughs> bullshit. I'm pissed off at the judges. If mm. it, if it, Do you know what I mean? If he'd yeah. have stopped him, it would have been a bad stoppage. No matter what, you're not going to get a positive reaction from Colby. Yeah. But what it did make me realise is how much... I mean, even though it came out in, the, in all the MMA press just before that, Colby decided to go, I'm only pretending. <laughs> I'm not, it's like me. I'm, I'm all right. I'm not a dickhead. Yeah, he did backtrack. And it's like, oh, come on, dude. I, I quite like... At the minute, it's that bad, it's good. Mm -hmm. Because he just... With what he's saying, the way that he, like, stutters over his badly scripted stuff and, like, messes up his own shit speeches, I quite like it. I yeah. quite... I like the fact that he's a tough bastard that gets his jaw broken and carries on for another two rounds or yeah. three rounds, whatever the fuck it was. So, like, he is the character that you want to see... Either you want to see win or you want to see beat badly. Every time. So he's polarising. Mm -hmm. Whereas Usman, he's an impressive guy. But it's not it's not that same sort of weird character that you just you stick out to want to see. But saying that, what did I put on here? Who do you want to see Usman fight next? Masvidal? No? No. And no, Masvidal deserves that. But, it's, it's, but if you're asking me what I like... Well, Leon what, Edwards, to be fair. Yeah, 100% mm -hmm. mate, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but that's it's still it's still a bit of a but it's child friendly fight, isn't it? <clears throat> but I feel Do you know like what I mean? As opposed to a scrap, like a proper fucking. I don't know, man. I mean, that was a dog fight. The last one was. A, yeah. I'm not saying that Leon Edwards isn't a good fighter by any stretch, but when you put something on a poster, when it's like Nate and Masvidal or Ka uh, Connor and Jose, yeah. it was like it's not, raw. It's not a goosebumps fight. No. no, 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 it's not. But it's but it's but it's a legit. Who's the best world to wait in the world fight? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I think I think. I think Edwards has got a damn good chance, especially with what he was doing in the clinch against Gunner. You know, with those elbows. Remember that cat, that single necktie elbow that he landed. Yeah. I just think he's he's, he's pace. He paces himself really well. Has he fought over five? Yeah, he beat Cowboy over five yeah. rounds, didn't he? Yeah. I think his pace over five rounds is good, and I think it's slightly faster than um, Usman's. He lost a decision to Usman, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That yeah. Was, was that his last loss? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. but then because obviously the the whole story was trying to build up to Woodley versus um, Leon, wasn't it? And yeah. he sort of just flat out refused London. I don't know if he's got not that Woodley's got bigger than his station, but you know, like when Rashad did it years ago, and Rashad was the champion. He was like, I'm waiting for John. I'm waiting for John. And he sort of just waited himself out. No, he wasn't the champion. He was waiting for his shot at John, mm. and he sort of just waited himself out and into obscurity, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because the sport picked up got, and it was always just on that massive like that journey to get even bigger and Richard was sort of he was big at the time and he could have like really drawn it out and he didn't he just sort of waited on the sidelines and with Woodley doing what he's doing I know he's doing a bit is he rapping? Yeah. Um, kind of. Kind of. Yeah. Woodley, I don't know if he's just seen The Fresh I mean, Prince I'm too not, many times. I'm not it's not my kind of music but he's I, I understand he's doing fairly well. But that's almost They're when like Ronda went into movies do you remember and it was like he doesn't like me still. Really, <laughs> we worked together in Vancouver, and we we shared a car ride to the to the uh, the arena. Oh man! And he didn't speak to me for about twenty minutes. Was it like that? And he couldn't help. He wanted he needed to tell somebody about his, his about his new single, so he had to tell he had to talk to me because I was the only option. <laughs> Did it feel a bit like that film with Robert like Downey Jr. and Zach Galifianakis? It's just uh, what, due date. Oh, due oh, due yeah, date when yeah, you're driving yeah. along together. That's great. <clears throat> a little bit. I feel like Woodley's too high maintenance. <laughs> For the UFC, for for himself, he is. He is a little bit. He is a little bit. I think he has changed a lot. When you go back to the old embedded days, when he was with his family and he was like getting ready, when it was like affliction had thrown up over the promotion. Can you remember? Oh yeah. And he was like he seemed so humble and everything. Whereas I think he sort of he saw a bit of that Connor sort of shtick and he took it in a little bit. But the problem was similar to Usman, 
before they were champions, they were both considered quite boring. If you remember, Woodley Woodley didn't have that massive knockout of Robbie Lawler. He was fighting poorly yeah, he, in... He, in, in, there, he did, which he won a lot of fans from that. But it's he it's only when... hundred times. Yeah, yeah, on a gift. It's only when he became champ that he started getting a bit more exciting. Do you know what I mean? He got a bit more... Who, Woodley? Yeah. I'd have said he'd gone the other way. I'd have said he was more exciting before he was champion. When he became champion, he had, what, Wonderboy, Wonderboy, Maya... Oh, yeah. I suppose you're right. Wonderboy, Wonderboy, Maya, Usman. Was that right? It was Wonderboy his first defence? I think so. He knocked out Robbie, uh, Robbie for the belt, and then he had two defences against Wonderboy. Cause the f- Let me just Google it. Yeah, no, you're right. Well, all right then. Usman then. I, I, Usman's I do, I do most it, exciting fight was I, I definitely the Colby one. I'll be Jamie. <coughs> I'll be Jamie. Usman's um, most exciting fight has been the Colby one though, right? Yeah. 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 See, I think there's been so many super fights recently and I, I just feel that now Usman should fight the person who really does deserve it the most. And I and do feel yeah. like that's Leon. Yeah. And I think if they were to fight, then you could pro- perhaps do something fun with, yeah, because whoever whoever's left out of that, you've got to fight Masvidal. You have Leon. They've obviously got some grudges from UFC yeah. London. That would be great. That would be a good fight. And um, and Robbie, I think Robbie could be back in the mix as for well. For sure, yeah. Wonder Boy, Wonder Boy, Maya, Darren Till, Usman. So we had four defenses, one drawn, three victories. Yeah, and Darren Till was <laughs> really those, good. I mean, that, those <clears throat> those Wonder Boy fights and the Maya fight were. Well, it made more sense in my head when I was thinking it on my walk, but clearly I was completely wrong. But Usman's fight with Colby was exciting. I can take that from it. But I don't know. It was a great fight. Yeah, I mean, you can't, there's just nothing you can't take away from either of them. They just, they completely put it out there. I mean, Usman to me seemed to have a bit more of a game plan. Colby sent a bit. I don't know, points he sent frustrated, Mm. because obviously he got a fucking broke jaw, dude. Yeah. Mm. And, but he stayed in there, man. It, it's hard when, if you're backing someone and it does stop a minute before the end, because you can always, even when you like watch Frankie this weekend, you're like, oh, two more minutes, come on, Frankie. You, mm. you just got that. And we've seen it a few times where people are saved by the bell or just completely turn it around. Yeah. But nowadays, you've got to be so careful as well. I, I, didn't, th- I, I, didn't, have, I didn't have Colby winning the fight, though, I don't think. I think I had it 3 1 to Usman. But then again, I've, only, I've not watched it back since the night, so. Because as soon as that event was over, I was straight into the career card, which we'll talk about in a bit. But yeah. um, I, I still felt like Colby was losing anyway. So even if he'd have made it the distance, I still don't think he would have mm-hmm. lost. With those judges, though, I think it's easy to always err on you going into a draw uh-huh. on a five rounder. Because uh-huh. the thing is, the amount of decisions we've seen, which are just full tilt, pure dog shit. Yeah. Like, the, what are you even watching? Mm. Do you know what I mean? So. I wouldn't have been mad. I don't think if if you look to the toughness side of things with what Colby's gone through, with the game plan of what Usman's gone through, if they had gone in two two and it was a draw or whatever, I don't think anyone would have been pissed off. Do you know what I mean? It was mm-hmm. it was pretty close. Yeah. But I just I quite like the storyline by the end of it with um with the pair of them. Because they yeah. both wanted mm-hmm. to hurt each other. It was, yeah, it was. You could tell like it kind of faded off during the fight, even in the atmosphere in the in the stadium. It, and then towards the end, it slowly picked up, but you could just tell that they were just trying to hurt each other. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Proper out for it, but yeah. I think sometimes it's nice when you get the embrace afterwards, or you get that you can like even with Shamrock and Tito, with a load of people. I mean, obviously you with yeah. Marcus Dave, Marcus ran out the cage didn't he, afterwards, but yeah, it, 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 that was weird though because right after the event, it's like right as soon as the 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 bell rang at the, at the end of the uh, the fight, we shook hands and kind of nodded. And then after that, he didn't want to talk to me, so it was it was kind of weird. But yeah, but it is always got even you, just, if, you get respect for someone that you fight with. Yeah, after a fight like that, it doesn't matter who it is. Well, know, did you see matter. Jose and Connor on Twitter when everyone was worried about Jose looking like someone had put him in a tumble dryer, and they were all worried oh, about yeah. him looking skinny? But Connor came through and sort of was like, "Do you know what? I think he's doing it right. He's doing this," and was really yeah. compl- complimentary and good luck on your fight. And Jose even commented to say, oh, "I've got respect for him." Yeah, yeah. which I think. How did you feel about that decision? Fucking yeah, seething because I don't know. Yeah. It just seemed had, so obvious Jose, didn't he? for real. I had Jose two to one all all Se- day, second and third. Why the it? fuck did he not kick at all? I was saying that to Wad the whole time. Not one leg kick. 
Yeah, not I one. It was weird. And I was like, but then again, same, same with Max Holloway. Like, dude. It, like I think it was the end of the fourth round. The stat was sixty-eight leg kicks to zero for Volkanovski. Man, it's when Joe kept saying, "I don't know if they're going to score the leg kicks." I'm thinking, if they don't dude, score the leg kicks, see... fucking Volkanovski wasn't even in the fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You fucking mad. Just not to jump around, but did you see the uh, Alexander Rakic's leg? That's, yeah, um, it looked like his knee had a that knee. Was weird. It looked like his knee had <laughs> a knee. Weird. Did, like, have, you, have you seen that? Yeah, 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 against oh, Uzumi. Yeah, how? It was like it was as soon as the second round had started, Volkan landed a kick on it, and it was like there was a little like stripe of swelling. It looked like a like a fucking party sized like Mars bar under his under his skin. And like I was literally, it, I was completely distracted by it. <laughs> and I've not listened to the commentary back, but I'm sure I wasn't talking about anything else. It was just slowly <laughs> swelling up, and I was watching it. And every now and then, Volkan would kick it, and then you'd see it go. <laughs> and it was like by the end of it, it was just mm. that was like Faber's eye. Yeah, against Peter Yan. That, up bad. that went down real quick though. <sighs> that was a beating, wasn't it? How good's Peter Yan? Re- the thing was, it looked like Faber was really enjoying it. Yeah. And. When he fought Simon and he got that stoppage, I felt it was kind of quick at the time. I had nothing, don't get me wrong, you know I love Faber to bits and I've followed his entire career. So when he retired, I was kind of like, cool, I can live with that. That's wicked because you see so many people go past and go through too long. And when it was out and I'm 40, I'm coming back and he did what he did and I was like, okay, that's cool. So you tick that box, we're good, we're out. And then the UFC are like, oh, fuck that guy. We're going to give you the hardest guy in the <laughs> like, yo. I thought I thought that Faber was your boy. Yeah. I don't know if he stole some stuff off the off the set of like him and Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> or if he's if he's not sharing the juice. But when he came and he was against Peter Yan, that he just looked his age to a degree because he was slightly just just a bit too late on just things, a bit, behind, bit slower. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a ten year younger Faber, it would have been a lot closer. But yeah. Peter Yan was almost doing that thing every time he dropped him. He was just like. Or what you got? They were chatting but, a lot, weren't they? Yeah, they yeah. were, and it was, oh, it yeah. was hard to see. F- Faber's Faber's right at that level where he's, you know, what is he in? What is he ranked? Anybody know? No, he wasn't ranked because he'd been retired. So I think it's either twelve or nothing. Is it? I think so. But did you notice how many people over the last few events have been knocked down, like the turtles used to fall when you were playing that game on the Mega Drive? Do you remember the Turtles game? And when you lo- run out of energy, it'd go, they'd fall onto their bum and go, ah, oh, shell shocked. Can you remember? It was like the arcade game, Turtles Arcade. I never had a Mega Drive. Oh, well, was... I only ever played it at my friend's house. Was... Oh, okay. Well, it even when sad. the ream got hit, he just sort of went down like a like a toddler Dude, sitting. Dude, have you seen how fast he's healed? He's I like Wolverine. Go, I asked the question at the fucking Q&A the other day. No, he was getting up asking questions and I'm like, how is nobody asking about his lip? It's ridiculous. The fact that he's it. not flapping. It was like... Oh, over him. Yeah. 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 Oh, it, yeah. it looks like it didn't even happen. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, like, what's that? 12 days? Crazy. Insane. Must have had some kind of plastic surgery. Yeah, he must yeah, have. Yeah, the UFC would put, Amazing. put him through that. Amazing. Unbelievable. Insane. Faber was ranked 10th after the Simone fight. Okay. They yeah. haven't updated it. He's still one of the best in the world. He's just yeah. not quite... And I, and I think they could have done that. They could have flipped it with Jan mm. and Marais and Jose and. You reckon Faber. we're going to get Aldo against uh, against Faber at bantamweight? <sighs> yeah, I'd, I don't know. That'd be fun. I'd like that. Both coming off mm. a loss. Yeah. Well, if if Jose Although, doesn't throw any kicks. <laughs> yeah. Because basically he smashed Faber's legs. Dude, that was ridiculous. So his leg looked like a purple sausage. It's horrible. <laughs> it was bad. So I was I was fuming with that. Fuming with um, the Jose decision. Yeah. Pretty gutted for Faber because, let's be honest, the win for Yan didn't do that much. Uh-huh. It wasn't like you went, oh, that's Peter, Peter Yan. Yeah. I now, oh, now I'm invested. It's just not, it didn't do anything for me because, no. no, not really. It um, did for me a tiny bit, to be fair. But Yan, he's, he's been on a tear, man. He's I just know. a fucking cyborg. Yeah, but to be there, I think to be there as well. All right. <laughs> it definitely it definitely heightens the moment doesn't it yeah like I was coming <clears throat> me and Wad had an edible <laughs> and I was uh, we there's a pattern and All I right. was coming up just as Faber was coming out and then the chilies dropped and it was just like it was, it was powerful it was really good man powerful I was just sat there just <laughs> looking <laughs> at Wad <laughs> 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 this is so beautiful with Wad talking to his chair 
<laughs> I know all the words there. <laughs> I wasn't far off crying. Well, yeah, yeah. I looked at one and we Is just looked at each other. <laughs> I we that. both just giggled and just <laughs> coughed. <laughs> like, yeah. I had that after the Nunes fight as well. It was just like, I think she did like a, she did quite a touching speech. Yeah. To um, Harris's daughter. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. It was quite moving. Yeah. Man. Do you, were you surprised she didn't get the finish? Yeah, I thought he was going to be first, stopped in the first. In the first one. That but, point where, where Durandami was about to tap from the arm trying yes. and she released it. And she, she just mauled her. So and I think yeah. if she... It was almost like you need to slow down a little bit, take a breath. A little bit, little bit too much respect for her, maybe. Liked maybe. Her a bit too much, perhaps. What I, I feel d- like she'd have blasted through some of those, you know, some other people. What I did love... Seemed, seemed, yeah. If you watch that fight again, listen out for DC saying Jermaine Durandami. Because the amount of times he's like... J- J- Jamanda Rain, main Rain, Jaman, <laughs> Jamanda J- Rain. J- I didn't have the. Com- J- we didn't have the commentary. Jermaine Deman, but it's because he's quite similar. Uh-huh. Honestly, he was like <laughs> random mate, Jaman, Jamanda Rain, and then because I was Jermaine. cooked watching, it, I was like Jamanda Random Man, <laughs> J- what? Jamanda Woo, and honestly, the all I could focus on was just. Them trying to pick a bit of Jermaine Durand May's name. <laughs> they, they, look at Jermaine now. Yeah, she's throwing up a, uh, a it triangle. It is so difficult though. I kept I kept messing up um, Said Namagamedov's name because like when the fight's going and there's like a load of shit happening, like and you're trying to get a name out, it's just like you can screw up any name. It's so easy. So to many do. syllables. The trouble yeah. is, is when you try. Right? When we did one of the first podcasts, it was not even video, and you said we were talking about uh, Habib, mm-hmm. and you. You said to me, what's his name? And it was Namagamedov. Mm-hmm. But my lips are still wanting to go sideways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because you listen to Fight Disciples too much. Namagamedov is what... Nick I do have to block out the so names. My yeah. dad's the worst, man. I picked him up from the airport and he was like, oh yeah, I was watching uh, UFC 245 and he was commenting and then he was just like, he called Khabib, Khabibi. <laughs> he would say inste- instead of... MMA, it's UFC boxing. <laughs> oh my God. Don't mix the martial arts, Dad. <laughs> We've already done that. We've kept that into three letters. Come on, when I first went on Sherdog forums back in the day, I mean years and years ago, and uh, I wrote a comment, and I'd referred to someone as a UFC fighter because they were, uh-huh. and this guy came out there with his full fucking what's its fingers and his fat fucking belly and he's like oh I think you'll find it's MMA mixed martial arts it's not just UFC they're not the only promotion and I was like fucking yo chill the fuck out bro because basically on their forum you were graded by belt the same as if like you were in judo or, or uh, jits or whatever and the, because I'd been there for years and just been looking because I didn't have a lot of time to comment because I was in a, working in a bank so I, I'd see a lot of it but not really pass comment I was a white belt and then these guys are like fucking self-certified black belts, <laughs> just fucking ripping me. I'm like, yo. I love the fact I've got an I've got a um, I don't ever go on forums anymore, but I've got an account on the underground on mixedmartialarts.com, and it's I think I've posted like twelve times, but my my account started like you know back before the internet was a thing. Like it's the oldest account, but I've hardly ever posted. I, I quite like them. I don't, I don't do forums anymore. We used to do Cage Warriors forum all the time, and that was that. That was like the Cage Warriors forum back in the day was like the center of mixed martial arts in the UK. In the UK, it yeah. was like everything that was relevant was on that forum. That was where the outlaw came from, the nickname. That's when I first started using that. Like Paul Paul Daly's nickname on there was KGB, which which stood for keeps getting better. Um, and then we all had like a little signature underneath, and it was like Team Rough House, and you know. And every like a day, clan. <clears throat> yeah, it was like every day I would go on the forum. It was like check my emails, check my MySpace, and check the Cage Warriors forum. Put and your pocket shell bead on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got like there were so many there were like so many fights made on there and like rivalries and trash talking like the Marcus Davis thing, like yeah. that whole that whole thing with Marcus Davis started from the Cage Warriors forum because uh, I found a photo of him on li- online. It was him wearing a kilt leaning up against the wall and I just posted that on the Cage Warriors forum and was like hey look at this photo I found and those guys were fucking photoshop savages they were evil and they ran with this thing and they photoshopped him in all kinds of different things which we don't need to he did have a sense of humour though didn't he no not at all not not about that (laughs) in any way at all he was furious and um, (laughs) 
but that just went out of control and then the cage warriors forum then kind of started to leak over into the u.s forums and then it spread like wildfire yeah. and uh yeah but there was, that was a lot of fun those forums were i think the closest thing we get to forums now is when any video is uploading if you look at the comments on the yeah. when it's i do like reading premiering. the comments i do reply to them sometimes yeah, yeah if ever you see comments that have replied if it says dan that is me um because I, I do reply to them sometimes there was there were a bunch of people like literally if they were in front of me saying that i would have slapped them across the face just for the ignorance <laughs> like you can't be a fan of mixed martial arts and not know the end of the dragon soundtrack yeah what the fuck you can't you can't do it you can't do it and you can't refer to it as creepy porn like, music <laughs> like trick like take ufc one trade it in and get into the dragon start there like oh my goodness <laughs> you have to you have to know don't think don't feel. think feel yeah these guys were sick of me in vegas we put enter the dragon on and i i, I can't it. help but quote that's I'm it good. Good. i can't help but quote don't it's just, concentrate never seen on it. I, I enjoyed it a lot yeah, yeah never it's seen great. Before that. we've just been watching uh, 36 chambers which is going to be the theme of the uh the, the january vegas trip mm. <laughs> movie yeah uh, which is not long now man which we're going to book soon and we're going to, Owen's going to come on you yeah. there you go this time. don't tell anyone yet I won't tell anyone but yeah <laughs> when Steve starts getting texts she, going I didn't think he was going away again not till March she doesn't sound like that no she doesn't you won't be able to come if you do impressions of her like that no do oh, we'll edit this out I'm not allowed to yeah <laughs> I'll dub it with I think to be honest I think lines. as soon as Wad is this is going to be like one. you're going to want to edit loads of it out there'll be nothing less <laughs> yeah be like, me and Wad had an edible me and Peep had an edible and then Peep came through Wad is a savage man Savage. He is. It took me by surprise. I thought he'd be like, "Oh, I'll do one after like eight p.m." Or it's like waking up <laughs> on it. <man. laughs> what was he doing to you? When in Vegas, that was a right? funny when sound. <laughs> it was good renting a place though instead of staying in hotel rooms. Because when we went in in July, we stayed in hotels, and as as fun as that was, it's like like weed's legal, but you can't smoke in the hotels. No, you can't smoke on hotel property. But we did have a lot of cops and robbers with the security guards of the hotel. Because yeah. bear in mind, the hotel's like a thousand floors up. It's fucking massive. The car park's like, it's fucking jobs however big. driving around in these, in these wagons, in these trucks. Just the, and it was like Pac-Man. So you've got these four trucks just going, boop, 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 all right, like inky, binky, inky, it blinky, like pinky, and Clyde. I didn't think about it Going like around that. the fucking car park. <laughs> it was. And we're up on the roof like... We're watching them coming. Nom, 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 nom. Trying to fucking get through <laughs> these pellets. Like... <laughs> Is that a cigarette? Maybe the best one. Yeah, the driver. The best one was mystery stood at the side. Bear in mind, it's so fucking high, and you're just leaning on the side of this car park, and he was like, "Yeah," and like really digging this fucking joint. And then this truck pulled up because when we were with Dan, was this when we were outside, yeah, when we were with Dan, we were way more careful because he's recognisable. When we were ourselves, we were like, "We'll just do it here," and if we get told off, we'll stop. So we were like, "No," there was a couple of times. I might have been when we were down the bottom. Yeah, we're outside the front of the casino, in the corner, having a joint. And this this truck pulled up and he went, is that marijuana? And he was like, say it, mate. <laughs> is that marijuana in your hand? And he was like, Pfft. sorry, mate, I can't hear you. What are you saying? <laughs> and he's like, are you smoking marijuana? And he's like, Pfft. are you saying wanna wanna? <laughs> sorry? Wanna, and wanna, then he wanna. got out and he was like, Pfft. Like on the Big Lebowski with the with the hair tweezers with the pick. What's the what's the uh, what's the one with Snoop Dogg? Is it uh, half baked? Yeah, yeah. Where or, Snoop Dogg just appears out of nowhere. He's like, let me hit that one time. Yeah. He burns the whole thing. Down. Yeah. <laughs> just like on Friday. So now he's all he's got is a burnt roach in his fingers, and he's got out and he's like, "Are you smoking marijuana?" And he's like, "Yeah, I was. It's legal here, isn't it?" And he was like, "No, you can't do that." And he's like, "Oh, fair enough. It's gone now." So he drove off and he said, should we roll another one? <laughs> 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 Honestly. That. Like, imagine imagine the, the money that you would make if you opened the first hotel that had a marijuana smoking area. Mm. Like, well, what's the you deal You wouldn't be that? able to move. <laughs> It'd be amazing. Yeah. And you got to lie. Yeah, yeah, but don't fucking you spark you it. You'll to, you kill four people. You spark up. You'd just be able to breathe and it'd be... <laughs> yeah. Now, that was, that was high rollers walking yeah. into that place. Insane. That, that was, was amazing. Good. Yeah. It was a good time. Oh. That was one of the coolest... I think that's... Yeah. Do you know what? I was thinking about this. I've, obviously, we've never should we, been... Should we, have a, should we have a 2019 review? Yeah. Let's do it. Because what yeah. we're doing, we're heading uh, to uh, to Amsterdam in a couple of days. Yes, you are. To work. Uh, but we're working. It's a work trip, of course. Yep. Um, we just need to be elsewhere to focus. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's called the Bulldog Bar. 
no, no, I don't like that place. It's okay, too, scratch that. Edit. I've got, a, I've got a few. I've got a few other spots. Anyway, um, we're putting together a photo book, like a limited edition coffee table book. It's going to be spectacular. Classy as fuck. It is. Um, yes. How did I get into that? Because you were going to do a review. Um, review. Oh, that's of it. Yeah. So we need yeah. to. We need to have a review of 2019. Like favorite moments. <laughs> right. It's been. A bit I've been thinking idea, about this. Have you? Yeah. I think about this all the time. To be fair, I'm very lucky. Yeah. Um. Because we had a look, the first the first video went up day before Valentine's Day, didn't it, on the channel? Yeah. So that's like official start Podcast. day. Yeah. So that's when we that's, that's when we got it all together, isn't it? And when we started pushing the boat out. But I think for me personally, and you can cry if you want to. It's okay. <laughs> it's the same How place. Late now, Hold uh, back the How is that still got four hours left? We've been. So I'm fucking saying, man, it lies like oh. a motherfucker. Do we need to turn the light on. Is that going to look weird? Are we going to start to look like Smurfs because it's all blue? Um, Can we no, get white hats? It might, it might be getting a bit dark, but I'll we'll sort this out after after I've done after okay. I've told this. But in case you start crying, yeah. Okay. For me, we'll on the camera. one of the one of the best moments for the, of the year definitely was when Dan asked. Well, you were going out. You were going out to go to Florida to go film some Amanda Nunes stuff, mm-hmm. and. Dan obviously asked if I wanted to come and we could make some content in and around uh, American Top Team or AT and T. AT and T. I think to be fair, I persuaded you to do that. It wasn't you asking. <laughs> <laughs> and my highlight was the Masvidal day. I think that's probably one of the best days of my life, as pathetic as that might sound. It was it was amazing. Because it, the best thing about it is it none of it was scripted. It all happened from a, just improvising and, and hanging out. And you... I don't know where you were to start with. I think you were doing something do. with BT Sport, I weren't you? I remember yeah. exactly where I was. I, I, I was did. walking between trains, like <laughs> an hour away from the gym. And you dropped me off. Just for one cutaway shot. We pulled up outside the gym. That's exactly what it was for. We pulled up outside the gym and, and, they, and they called me and they were like, are you nearby? I'm like, yeah, we just pulled up outside. Because that's where we thought we were meeting. Yeah. Them. I'm like, outside where? We're at the gym. Oh, no, no, no. No, we'll send you a location. We need you, We need to get a shot of you walking between these two trains. I'm like, hang on a minute. Sparring. It's sparring at, 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 at AT&T. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Have you had your tetanus shot? <laughs> dude, I got sent a fucking video the other day of Mike Perry telling the story. SB Nation, it's Tetris. I think. The, <laughs> Tetris, I sent it to you. Right. Talk about a Tetris it's shot. fucking gold. Anyway, sorry. Derailed that one. I'll tell you that story in a minute. Um, so we were at the American top team. So we pulled up outside and, and they caught, and I'm like, sparring's, sparring's now. Like, like what, what the fuck? Why are we not here? Yeah, we need to get the shot. You're walking between these two trains. I'm like, are you mental? First of all, it's Florida, so it's balls hot. It's fucking gross hot. Like, can't move for sweating. They want me to drive down to this spot and walk between these two trains. And I got there and it's it's horrendous. And they're trying to get this shot. And I'm walking along and it's like, I've got flip-flops on. Because I'm, think, I'm thinking I'm just going to wander into the gym into to take gym, them off take and them walk off. onto the mats. And so I'm walking along in these fucking flip-flops. Walking along these rocks between all the train lines. These like bottles of piss just fucking scattered around. It was gross. And I'm thinking, there's like 20 or 30 UFC MMA contenders... Sparring. On the mat, sparring, and I'm here doing this. Avoiding hep C. Oh, <laughs> so you left me, didn't you? So fortunately, I'd left Mystery, and by the time he was there, he'd become best friends with Masvidal. Of course he had. And they tattooed each other's names on their bum cheeks. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> you would, wouldn't you? You would. Oh, yeah. I'll go first. He changed his, he's changed his Tinder profile just to hope Masvidal pops up on him. <laughs> to tattoo him <laughs> with his whacker. Um... So yeah, so by the time I got there, you'd, you'd already had a good chat with him and stuff, hadn't you? Yeah, I'd had a little chat with him and asked if we could do some, when Dan gets here, if we could do some stuff. And he was like, yeah, sure, man, but I'm going in an hour. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so I was like, messaged you and I was like, oh, when do you think you'll be back? And you were like, probably an hour. I was just like, oh, fuck. So I was just praying it came off and luckily he came through the doors and he was just finishing up wasn't yeah. it and then we and if you want to see it it literally starts from that moment doesn't it where yeah. where masvidal oh. masvidal starts um packing up you start chatting to him and then after we just dis- he asked if we wanted to come down to his et- his ends and yeah. and just come hang out and watch him like run on He's the track sprints that evening, wasn't he? yeah and that 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 track 
I'd seen in um, what's that thing called again? Oh, um, Friday Night Lights. Yeah, the by what? Genghis Khan, Masvidal's video guy, and it's called. Oh my god! There's a, there's a whole series out on YouTube, and it's with like Colby Covington, Masvidal when they all used to live together. Tales of the Grind. Tales of the Grind. Yeah. That's it. It's really good, there and there's a lot of Yol Romero in there. And in there, they spend a lot of time at this track and field place. Like Yol's there a lot, and like I just remember turning up like, "Fuck, this is yeah. the place." Remember the drive down there, the thunderstorm. Yeah. It was ridiculous. This thunderstorm driving Horrendous. down there. It was like like we was like down like twenty miles an hour on the motorway because it was the rain was so heavy. Shit. And you were like, calling oh, him. I'm like, you, st- are you still doing? Are you still doing sprints? By the time we got there, it already started, hadn't it? Yeah. But it was cool because it had rained and it was like it was like Florida hot, humid, and like all the rains evaporating. But then there's still thunderstorms going nice. in the background and stuff. And he was like shadow boxing under the bleachers and with his dad. Wicked conversation. Yeah. yeah really good. And Abe as well. Yeah. That that's was, that's that, almost half a million views on our channel, isn't it? It that? is, yeah. It's crazy. To to think that came out of just Hanging nothing around. though and yeah. just like being proactive. They're the best. They are the best. They're for the sure. best. Is that would you say that's your that was top pick? For me We don't have to be in it, you don't have to worry. Yeah, I know. Like, that's why just, I'm picking it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for me that was I, I, even to this day, man, I have to, sometimes I think about that and I'm like, fuck, that was so cool. Yeah. There's something that will, will be, I'll die and be like, that was cool. That's yeah. I'm sure there'll be many more, but that was number one for me so far. And and then the others were probably Nate Diaz fights and seeing Nate fight, that was pretty amazing. Yeah. How about you? And you? And you? Um, there's so many, it's hard to pick one. But yeah. I'd say the day... Um, probably when we were in LA and we went to Rogan's podcast oh, yeah. and then we went to the the beach afterwards that day was good um, it, it's it's pretty upsetting ain't it that well, it's not but it is in a set in a weird way that we have t- usually in my life I'll have one of these experiences every two years and I remember it like I'm like yeah keep thinking about that now they're happening weekly and it's just like man I don't know where to store some of these for pushing amazing the old, memories pushing like, the old yeah. shit out of your brain every time you have a new experience like, yeah. good thing we have a YouTube channel really it where is, we can yeah. archive all this <laughs> shit yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> go back and remember well that's what that's what the book's going to be about because we've got like 6 million photos of all kinds of stuff so we're yeah. going to put this this book together and and we've got some and, and it's it. not like amateur shit either it's like top quality stuff man yeah. like some even like got some good portraits of people as well and I, I act surprised and I probably shouldn't be but some of Dan's photos are genuinely like proper good man like I, I come from a photography background did it at uni have a massive passion in photography and street photography and photojournalism and some of the photos you've got are just ridiculous they are they're really mm. fucking good man like some of the Abu Dhabi ones infuriatingly like, good yeah, no, like happily good. No, like I'm. Oh, like, he did that, did you? No, it's sick. good. Yeah. I, no, I didn't. Honestly, it's just like, in a pat, not in a patronising way, but like, it's just like, sick. I was like proud. I was like, yeah, <laughs> my dude. <laughs> it was good shit. Thanks, man. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks. Yeah. So we got a lot of cool stuff yeah, to come out, man. Yeah. So go on. So what was yours on the um, LA yeah, Rogan the podcast? Going Rogan podcast and, beach. and go just. Driving was around just LA, the whole time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but there's been so many days. I mean, I, I really enjoy like the IMAF tournaments as well. Oh, like, man. In Rome was really good. Um, yeah, so many, so many yeah. good days from the past. IMAF is pretty, months. pretty amazing. Ain't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Just, just seeing the the sport from that kind of level mm. and how it develops. And I think number one is just like really inspiring, ain't it? Yeah, it is. Makes you, I mean, want to get involved in the sport just and competing level as well mm. like massively but yes yeah, because one of the best and we spoke about is there one of the coolest things about IMAF is like you see the losers but it's, and in jiu-jitsu there's a similar sense of like when you lose it's not the end of the world and there's a and you can almost take more inspiration out of the loser than the winner in those environments yeah and, and that's like that, yeah, I think that's 100%. so interesting yeah because you come away and you're just like man fair play did it you mm. gave it and, and it's yeah there's something about it that's really honest and just like and beautiful seeing the same people because obviously we were in Rome for the Europeans and going to the Worlds in Bahrain seeing the same people competing again 
it was really good yeah mm. watching that progression yeah yeah exactly yeah like my, going back and meeting the same people it was good it's like uh, Mohammed Mokayev like we yeah. first heard about him in, in Rome didn't we mm-hmm. and heard amazing things and then we was anticipating I wonder how he was going to be this time around in Bahrain and it was just like it stepped up a level Domination. that like yeah well that's cool to see a pro- like a progression from a different level because that's what I'm saying there are no lights there are no cameras essentially mm. it's yeah. not like the big show it's it's they're still putting in 100 10% but you're going to have known them now from this level and it's like you know when when you hear Nick Pete talking about Tony Bellew he's following him everywhere he's known yeah. him forever and the thing is yeah it's it's a weird one of those things that you don't always have to justify a friendship or it's like if if Nick and Tony are seen together it's not like he goes he's my mate mm. he's my mate by the way <laughs> like when we know what it's like obviously when we're, we're with Dan it's different to when you're not with Dan but you don't ever have to just continuously it's his chat up line <laughs> yeah <laughs> hey man I tell you what <laughs> do you know the outlaw Red Mohawk just saying Wikipedia <laughs> just adding the UFC like into your job title on Tinder it's just <laughs> help me a million I hope none of these girls are watching <laughs> yeah what <laughs> What do you do? I frustrate the fuck out of the UFC <laughs> profile. But yeah, it's it, it's nice to see that. And the thing is, you're bringing that to everyone else as well because obviously we can't all get out there. So when you get to see that, it is, and I've always said it before about like just consuming content. And it's been recent with the UFC where there's not been as many fights, but you still need to fucking, you still need something if it's the ultimate fighter or Bellator or whatever Polaris. it is. Just something, yeah, just mm. something to grab. Like the Polaris clip's gone fucking bonkers. And yeah. essentially, it was a lot of feedback of people just having a bit of wrestle match. Mm. But it's still, you still need to know you've seen it. It's like the Rampage and Fedor fight on New Year's Eve. It's not the best, but mm. it's still something. So you, it's the ghost of Christmas past, isn't it? Yeah, but it's like, it's like that line. <laughs> yeah. The ghost of Christmas past. Like two, right. That fight in 2004 would have been shit up. Yes. That but fight now is. To, so quote, to quote Joe Rogan is when he says still got four hours left exactly it ain't space mountain but there's no queue <laughs> like, <laughs> do you know what i mean uh, and it's true you, there like, is still something I, adam uh, adam hunter put, put a post out the other day uh, it was good are you gonna check the lights yeah uh, adam hunter put a post out the other day he has some fucking great tweets and it was uh it was about bellator and he said the uh, bellator's like it's nearly gone pitch black <laughs> Do you need to re-record that whole no, no, sentimental fine. statement? We could do, yeah, it'll be fine. It's all, it's all right. It's all part of the fun. Are you all good? Yeah, yeah. I can see my buttons. slippers now. Was it not recording? Nah, I'm just bumping up the ISO. Okay. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Yeah, bump up the ISO. <laughs> That's what you did in your photography course, isn't it? Yeah. I just press buttons no, and no hope it works. Options left. Um, yeah, plug them back in. As Are you, you were, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking clipped you the other week. Crack me up. Oh, uh, yeah. that your pink drink? <laughs> your pink drink. Your pink drink. <laughs> it smelled like fucking perfume. To be awful. fair, right? So it was uh, just to be fair, I know. You did to be fair. You've done a lot. Oh, God. Every single time. Was, every t- every <laughs> was, that the, was that the ropey baby sham? It was a it weird. Like a weird sham. It was yeah, a weird yeah, fancy yeah. pink drink. Yeah, but what happened was... I turned up and me and Wad were, were, were I was surprised we were on the same wavelength here because he, he was like <laughs> Wad had an edible <laughs> yeah. he, he goes oh do you know what I fancy a mojito and I was like me too get me one of them <laughs> so we asked the woman and she was like oh we don't have a mojito and we were like what so we were shocked so we were just looking through and I, I think I must have said I think I won't actually say what I said actually um, <laughs> but I asked for a fruity drink um, <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, yeah, fuck it. I just one. want a fruity drink. I didn't expect it to come on a plate. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it was like on a little plate with like just. There's probably about that much juice in there, wasn't there? It wasn't a Fluid. lot at all. So I was, I was pretty devastated when I actually saw the product because I thought it'd come in a, a glass. But it came on. It just came in a martini glass. It looked like a baby yeah, shot yeah, glass. Yeah, 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 yeah like yeah, a yeah, yeah. proper skinny. And stem. it cost mm. about a hundred quid. <laughs> so that's how <laughs> so I like walk over to the table with like Veronica, Dan, like everybody else with this fucking lame. Choke drink. it down. <laughs> <laughs> what? The? It was nicer, so. Yeah, that was funny. It is what it no, is. No, the, the clip of. Uh, anyway. No, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. You know which clip I mean. I um, do. 
What do you take away? Highlight this year? Oh man, I I have just been so many places. It's difficult for me to think where mm. I've been. Um, I tell I tell you a weird a weird highlight which which came to mind the other day again. Sitting <laughs> sitting on my bed in Shenzhen with the window and with the window curtain open because the window was massive. Listening to Tool's new album for the first time, it was practically psychedelic because all like. Shenzhen, as as weird and as oppressive as it felt with all the military and all that stuff there, and all the cameras and shit, um, it's actually a, it's a beautiful city because it's it's like it's China's Silicon Valley basically. It's like the technology district, so all of the buildings have got like light shows and there's like the whole fucking city's dancing at night. There's all kinds of stuff going. But on. in the day, it feels like battle royale. A little bit, yeah. It's bad, isn't it? Yeah, it was bad. Good um, film though. Yeah, good film. Really I was going to say film. Hunger Games, but I thought people watched it the day. messages. Yeah, I think you'll find that the other one's better. The original. It is. Yeah, of course. That would have been me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I watched the other day. So I'm, um, because uh, I got out to uh, South Korea and I like got into my research and I'd spent sort of two days just consuming the catalogue of fights that I got. And uh, it got to the stage where my brain was going a bit too fast and I had to watch something else to like switch it off. Usually Family Guy or American Dad's my yeah. go-to. But I was on I was on Netflix thinking, oh, I'll have a look at this uh, this kingdom, um, which is a it's a Korean like set in like Korean like feudal times or whatever. And bearing in mind I'm there for Korean Zombie versus Frankie Edgar. The whole fucking show's about Korean zombies. Amazing. The whole thing. It's very very cool. I've, I thoroughly enjoyed watching it. I binge watched that, and now I've just started binge watching Daredevil as well. Because mm. I haven't, uh, I haven't seen that. Mate, there's so much Bob stuff. Veronica's recommendation. There you go. It is good. Yeah. The Witcher, that new one that's oh, just come yeah. out as well. That's that's pretty good. I'm mm. only on like episode four, but it's is it good? Good so far. That's yeah. Jan Bojovic's favorite uh, book and everything. He always talks about that. Yeah. It's a video did game we do him a t-shirt? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We did him a t-shirt that we said did. Witcher on the back. Witcher. You're yeah. welcome, Jan. Yeah, we did. That's pretty cool. I didn't know you put Witcher on the back. I didn't fuck around, mate. <laughs> That's what I'm <laughs> you get some cool shit you're welcome because <laughs> I think there's a, there's a good point to say thank you to obviously the fans of the channel of yeah. what you guys are doing from supporting the Full Reptile Collective as in coffee supplements clothing because obviously we're really fortunate I mean we're saying all these different things about how we're experiencing different stuff but we're trying to take everyone as much as we can with us because even for me as part of the collective so. to be able to see what you guys are doing if I'm seeing that, and obviously they're getting to see it as well, it's, it's wicked. But without them buying into it and getting the gear, we'd be pretty much fucked. For sure. So mm -hmm. even the guys that say I sound like a six-year-old creepy girl. <laughs> well, that's, Thank you, my man. Well, <laughs> well I want to say... Keep clicking on those videos. That's it, yeah. <laughs> Keep clicking on listening you to can my put, You my can voice. say whatever you want in those comments. <laughs> yeah. You click on that video. <laughs> see, for me, I want, to, I want to acknowledge it because there's a lot of people, I'm not going to call them stalkers, but there's a lot of lifelong fans. And you'll have certain people that message you. I do. And message you to, to <laughs> Josh get through Barker to Dan. comes to mind. Yeah, see, see, we've all got our, we've all got our Benny, Craig, Craig Benny, Smith, Benny Gerda. Benny Wild. Benny the, the, Wild. Yeah. And, and, and when I say stalkers, I mean it in a loving way because um, they seem like really sound people. Sure. And I like having conversations with them. But I've got to thank all of those people for what we've done because I think there'll become a time when, with this going the way it's going, it's going to build an audience that will give the OGs, as in the Girders, and your and your Benny Wild and everyone else, the chance to go. I was there from the beginning. Yeah, I was there for the beginning before Mystery did Love Island. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was it was way Can better. You imagine? Way better before Can you Slim did Big Brother. The spread of STDs around that place. Oh, oh, my God, you yeah. take everybody out. Imagine Love Island with a clump of mysteries. Yeah. <laughs> fucking gonorrhea island but do you know what I mean like I think there'll be a, there'll be a time I think People. I've developed stuff that just kills all of that <laughs> <laughs> that's why he's got no hair that's he why he's got no hair on the, the top he's like don't worry take him do some research on him he's the, he's the antidote put it's... him in a test tube don't do that <laughs> Jesus so I mean patient X or whatever exactly so yeah I think that was a good chance to say cheers um, yeah, thank yeah, you. For sure, man. Yeah. You, you know, what I've just noticed this is the fucking Christmas podcast, and this is the least Christmassy we could have done. <laughs> well, yeah. There's no tree. There's no fucking Christmas sweaters. I was going to bring crackers, and then I was going to be like, someone like would have gone. Shall I snow I, I, I might, on, the, on the video? So the snow falling. I might down. badly like hover some Santa hats. Over yeah, <laughs> nice. 
because I was going to bring some crackers, but then I thought with Dan's audience, they're going to be like, oh, disposable waste, that's going to kill a badger. Like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hang on. Talking of that, before I, I go and do what I'm doing, um, I've got a question. On my Twitter, I've just put a, uh, a thing up from change.org. I spend far too much on that website signing petitions and shit, trying to stop the world being a terrible place. Fox hunting. Fox hunting. Get on there and sign that petition. Fucking fox hunting. Christmas, uh, Boxing Day fox hunt. They do these trail hunts. They say it's like a tradition and they chase scents. Fox still get ripped to bits by dogs. It's fucking savage. I want to ch- I want to hunt them <sighs> yeah. with dogs. You know the posh cunts in the red jackets? <clears throat> oh, they, well, that'd be a good <laughs> ultimate fighter. Just dude. feed them in just into a blender. Well, I think... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Why don't we like, just like, go and batter him? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I've been thinking of this. I have been thinking of this. Partly because I've been watching Daredevil. Yeah. I think it's time to bring back the warrior class. I said this to you guys mm, earlier today. I think, and not like, not knives, no, nothing, no hidden weapons, but swords. Like there should be, a, there should be a, a select group of people that are trusted to carry a sword in public. And I mean, I would just jump out of a tree and take those motherfuckers you out. You know when these schmonty motherfuckers have been training fencing at their, oh. uh, their private school the whole time and we turn up with a sword and we're like... Ready, dickhead? He's like, on oh, guard. Like, ah! <laughs> so anyway, the point is, go and find that post on my Twitter. Loads and loads of people have liked it and retweeted it. I appreciate all that. We'll put the go link in the it. description. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And and go and sign up to change.org and start signing some petitions because it does make a difference. Anyway, carry on. I'm just going to make this, this show a little bit more Christmassy while you Mom, chat amongst yourselves. Okay. What? Hope you're bringing in some... Mince pies. <laughs> <laughs> Mince pies! <laughs> We've got vegan mince pies. Cute little it's elves. just a box. <laughs> <laughs> I can pretend to eat them. Oh, mm, lovely. So, it's been such a good year. Yeah. So That's it. I mean, year. the whole thing it's with, surreal, well, from where it's built to where it is now is bonkers and just the journey that it's on. I've always said this before, how organic it is, how it picks up. People that either love it or hate it. I mean, I've had conversations with people who've just fucking screamed at me about something online. I'm like, okay, no worries, dude. And then before you know it, you start talking to them. They're like, oh, actually, you're quite sound. I didn't yeah. mean to be a dickhead. It's like, don't worry, dude. Like, It's easy mm. to, it's you easy know. behind a keyboard to scream. Mm. But the difference is, is I think, especially you guys are bringing a lot of content and stuff that you don't normally get to see. Even showing Dan in his natural habitat is not something that is seen by every fighter. So a lot of people can like remember his fight career and stuff, but to be able to see what he's doing day in, day out, because... Mm. I know there's still stuff that we don't record, but that's the fucking the important boring stuff. Yes, here we go. <laughs> Sick, man. Sick. As so, if you've got well, that was last year. That's pretty Wasn't cool. It? That is cool. The amount of people that have tried to buy this UFC sweater off me. You can suck a dick. <laughs> I'm being buried in this. I'm being burned in this. I'm being I don't know. Turned into bur- a tree. Buried, buried, burned. What do you reckon? Cremated? Oh, what? I think I'd be cremated. Yeah, Would you? Yeah. Cremate. I kind of like to... There's a natural graveyard on the way between Loughborough and Nottingham. From my premonition, so I don't think there's tree. enough of me to burn. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd burn well, mate. I think you'd just... <laughs> just Everyone would be high I mean. as fuck. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. Have everybody stand up. We're gathered here today. <laughs> Breathe him in. Breathe him in. He's made of the good stuff. That would be pretty cool if, if your mates could smoke you. <laughs> <laughs> After is there any of done left? Hang on a minute. Just check the grinder. Hang on a minute. No. That's just, Wait, isn't that in a movie? How high? Yeah. 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 All right. Red man. Really? Yeah. Are you referring to kissing winkles? <laughs> From I would be up for that if I died what? tomorrow, <laughs> and everyone was up for it. Viking berry. You could sprinkle cool. a little yeah. bit of me out to sea. Fire an arrow. Uh huh. That would be good. <laughs> I reckon you'd put that down as as a request, and then someone would get to the Viking burial like help desk. And they go, yeah, he wanted this. They're like, yeah, it's this much. And they go, yeah, we're just, just burning. Kick him out <laughs> yeah. of a dinghy and yeah. lob a match yeah. on him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kick him out of a dinghy, lob a match on him. Perfect. <laughs> That's all we want. That's my highlight of the year. <laughs> Slim <laughs> dinghy kicking. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, don't I don't like the idea of being cremated, but I think I probably will be cremated. You reckon, yeah. I just don't like the idea of just being set on fire. <laughs> <laughs> it is worrying to think, what if I'm not dead dead? <laughs> And I yeah. don't know how I, I don't know why why I started talking about this. It's no. a good chat, is it? Mm. I think so. Is it yeah. uh, good for the Christmas podcast? Yeah, Christmas so podcast. Like how would you like to be finished off, as in buried <laughs> or cremated? Yeah, I don't know. I, I I quite like the idea of the natural burial under uh, under a tree and yeah, that's kind of cool. Field or something. 
on the tree pod. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Have Just you wrap seen? Me in, wrap me in a, like a linen Like sheet, a burrito. You know? Have yeah. you seen how? Like they're doing Braveheart. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. A Braveheart burial. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen how uh, bodies decompose? Have you seen that documentary where there's actually a field that scientists use like forensic scientists and they'll get donor bodies and put them in certain situations in the field and just monitor how they decompose. Really? Like one of them, they just put in a tub, close the lid, open it, and it's just, man, it's disgusting. All this. How do you find this documentary? Uh, how to get rid of a body. <laughs> no, man, how to get rid of a body. There's a whole documentary. Standard stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> Daily Raptor research. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah, it got to be on top of these world affairs. Yeah. Oh, I think it's a pretty interesting topic. Yeah. Especially if you're looking at it from the perspective of forensic scientists, and and it's how it's, it's it's how people can work out how long a body's been dead for, where mm. it's been, and it's just it's really just watch CSI season one. Yeah. I'd they rather watch the there. real. Yeah. What real was that one, one where where a body had been. A, person had died in the shower and the shower had been left running on them and yeah. the water had like eroded and their they're body. just people soup yeah no yeah. way yeah. obviously you know their that... bones are still there though yeah yeah no no it'd been, but it'd been for days and it's just like eroded apart of their body oh, you yeah. know right that when if you turn up as a forensic scientist though and there was like a bath of body soup one of them would turn to them and go I'll give you two quid if you drink a bit. <laughs> yeah. Do you know just, what I mean? Just dip your little finger in it. Yeah. Have you seen... Mystery Wood. There's a... There's wood, yeah. Lick it for a tenner. What, yeah. dip, dip my finger in? You'd smoke a dead body, so you'd definitely taste it. No, I wouldn't it. smoke a dead body. You just said you would. I know, I would want my mates to smoke me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you would smoke them. <laughs> yeah. Hang Watch my No, no, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, we're all good. No, I, I might do, to be fair. If Jamie died tomorrow and one of his requests was to go somewhere cool and sprinkle me in a bit of your joint, I'd be like, my man, I'll do it. Cheers, I've got you back, dude. I'd do that for you. It's only right? ash, isn't it? It's just ash burn again. <laughs> Nothing's going to even happen. It's when you light up. <laughs> it's bad. It's so bad. Oh, what was I saying? What, oh, yeah, there what, was what, about really... then if, what about if you started hearing his voice in your head, though? Like on Venom. Be like, What's like up, if you started talking to you. Be like, head pop out. <laughs> yeah, and slowly. <laughs> hey, Peter. Hey, Peter. Slowly a tattoo like, starts appearing on his leg that says brain dead. Yeah. Boring We're gonna mistake put that on a of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I have made the most boring mistake <laughs> of my life. Just there not saying anything. <laughs> Comes to work in a course and we're like, the fuck, where's your car? It's like, this is my car now. Did you, I was going to go on from that because this is quite interesting as well. Have you seen the documentary about the guy who... Um, he lives in Mexico and what he can do is he can restore dead bodies so he can get the skin back so say you've been out in the Mexican desert for what like two weeks and you're half of you you've decomposed to whatever state you're at he's developed some kind of liquid that you put the body in that rehydrates the water back into the skin and you can start seeing seeing things that weren't there before so you can identify bodies with tattoos that weren't there previously because now they've left them in this 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 kind of lotion or whatever it is this bath lotion yeah. e45 <laughs> coconut oil e45 it's really interesting mm. on the topic of dying i thought i'd drop that one in yeah but his yeah. his theory completely fucks the forensics doesn't it we've put him in this tub not in my fucking tub <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it's> back, <laughs> back to normal <laughs> it's amazing what state they mm. can what how they can rejuvenate the body from something that looks like a mummy and then just uh, someone that just looks Mate. yellow and dead. I, I, wonder, I wonder if that's what they soak Hillary Clinton in. <laughs> yes, so right. just, maybe she's lazy in one of them baths overnight. I, I reckon she's just there's a little a alien pipe. in her head like, do you reckon? Him, like in Men in Black. Like a man yeah. In black, yeah. Reckon, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's the type of shit that I'll watch like on Vice or something or Discovery and I just sit there because I'll be working in the evening it's like two in the morning and the most random cod shit <laughs> gold rush fucking sea divers or some bollocks comes on. And I get so invested. I end up staying up like five hours to watch how much fucking gold they've got. <laughs> For, or like how many bodies they've managed to rehydrate. I end up watching <clears throat> wasp videos. Like, like I know because I'm afraid of them, but I'll end, I'll, some guy will just be like trying to impregnate a queen wasp and how they do it. And then Some guy? I end up watching <laughs> Come it. here, darling. Pretty weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, Drink your vodka. It's not the weirdest. <laughs> <laughs> My, well, I will. I will tell you my my highlight because yes. I didn't Vegas, definitely. But it wasn't. It wasn't the beginning. It was more the end because it was when we did the high rollers. And that day we did. We got up. We went shopping. 
we went to High Rollers, which was fucking bonkers in itself. Then we went for tattoos. Oh shit, was that the same oh, day? Yeah. yeah. Last chance. And then so we went we went High Rollers with Mighty Matt, uh is it Leonie and the kind of medic met Ben Saunders from there went to and last Frank chance me. tattoo mm-hmm. and saw uh Thomas yeah and Lisa yeah then went back and we realized we had so much green <laughs> that we basically needed to just light it all yeah just and that's when we filmed you going back to the room so that was one of my absolute yeah, highlights that was- that was a good one. There was, there's, there's shit loads, mm-hmm. obviously, but... There really is. Yeah, I mean, for the first time when we went to see John Jones at BT, when we got to meet him there, that was kind of strange because it was just like chatting to a friend. Like same as... Now, yeah, same as with Abe, because I know Abe's obviously his manager, but when you see him after that, and I always, I always say this about other people, that you meet that many people that when someone sees you, like Stefan Struve's coach, Bob, is an absolute sweetheart. He's one of my favourite people in this industry. Because the first thing he says to me is, how's your kids? By name, how's your wife? And it's like, just that remembering someone means a lot to me. So when you see Abe, he's like, dude, how are you, man? Those things, and like, tells you something that we did the time before. And you're like, oh, yo, mm. you're not just in it for a free shirt. Which a fuckload of people <laughs> are in it for a free shirt, trust me. A- Abe's a quality guy, yeah, and I really guy. like that guy. Mm. He's got a real good roster of fighters as well. Yeah. Well, he, but the thing is, he's just because he's got one of the top of the top of the top of the tree. I mean, he's he's, he's hanging out with John the whole time. So anyone below that, they're, they're still working their way up to his. So when he's acting the way he is, and you're with John, that means a lot to me because it's kind of cool. I heard yeah. he was trying to steal Terry Brazier. Oh, is he? I heard he was trying to steal Terry. Yeah. Oh, was he? Yeah. Hands off, ape. <laughs> Still him taking where? You you give him back. <laughs> I'm about to say once you run out of T C P and Savlon, you'd be sending him back. I want to introduce him to security Steve. I think him and Ty him and uh, Terry. Tiny and oh, Terry make, would be a make a reality TV. Wow. Yeah. 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 Terry is that was another highlight going to San Diego from New York. There's been a, a yeah. load of New York highlights. Oh New York is a magical place. Yeah. yeah, magical place. <laughs> That's it all is. I can remember. It's Just nice. woke up and it said it on a piece of paper. This was a magical place. Chase's <laughs> status was good. It's magical. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, that was. Chase yeah, that was. We got a shout out to Chase and status as well for ah, sending me because and me. Well, the previous podcast and Jamie, you, um, I'd sent oh, a load Marshall. of gear out to Chase and status. Uh, down, we sat down and me and Dan had worked it out what we we're going to send out. So we sent out a care package, and then they sent some stuff for Dan. To which, when we were on the podcast, I was like, oh, yeah, thanks. Being a dick. Like, yeah, thanks, yes. lads. Yeah. Oi, oi. That's uh, mate, that's sick. Jacket. So then all of a sudden, I get a full you know. care package just to make me feel even more shit. Yeah. So, mate, that one's dope. Their album and is it's yet- so oh, good. It's, it's awesome, it is. Right? It's incredible. It's one of, the, my, one of my albums <laughs> this year, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. If you haven't got this album... It's, it is incredible. Return to Jungle. I've got, a kids, I've got the kids now. Let's whenever I put... Huh? <laughs> Whenever I wear the jacket or anything, the kids go, Retreat! <laughs> Soundboy, surrender, retreat! So, yes, thank you very much, fellas. I will be crossing your palm oh, with Yeah, you. thank you very stuff. much for the t shirts and yeah, the bum bags. You. Much appreciated. Bum bags, fanny packs. A fanny pack. Bum bag. Something to pack your fanny in. Fag pack. What? My fag cigarette. pack. Cigarette. Cigarette, cigarette pack. Cigarette. Well, Cigarettes. It's, it's a worldwide podcast. Worldwide. We don't want to offend anybody. Yeah, sorry. You know. I was definitely on about cigarettes. <laughs> definitely on about cigarettes. Well, we did miss a fight off of, the, other than Perry and uh, the Perry fight. Mm-hmm. And I want to talk about Max, what we're saying about Max and Volkanovsky. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You Good came in. Bro. I wasn't watching it because I, I, I don't know why. I was just exporting something. And you came in and you were like, I think he's done it. Like into the media room. Yeah. I think, I think it's, I was like, he definitely done it. Max never really went into Top Gear, did he? No, he didn't. He was no, just he kind was. of cruising the whole. Yeah. Did you I see think. him on Rogan and like what you said about it? I haven't no, I haven't. I haven't. Mm. Is it good? It's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He 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 knew he was getting leg kicked, but he just didn't feel like that was enough in mm. the moment. And he said, I think he said in hindsight, looking back, there was a lot more than he thought there was. So he felt like he had won it because that's what he was doing. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I think there's a big difference though. Well, one thing I was thinking about it when I was walking the dogs 
in MMA, there's a big difference between a, b- losing and being beat. Yeah. Whereas I think Perry and Faber were beat. Yeah. I think Max only just lost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think anything happened to his stock. Yeah. And I think we've seen crazy decisions. They could have given it Max for some fucking insane. Mm. And like, now there was Rob. A Cecil Peoples. Yeah. It so a, it was a hobbery. It yeah. was. It was. <laughs> if if you're scoring the Aldo card like that, as well, you, if they were scoring the Aldo surprised. card like that, yeah, well, fucking like Max yeah. won by TKO. Yeah. That was a conversation we were having earlier. I actually made notes at him. I actually read that note a minute ago and thought to myself, "Now nah, talk about another podcast." But we discussed it earlier about scoring, and if if there's a fight where there's a scorecard that's really odd, or a referee makes a call about something that was strange or whatever, like. They, sh- they should be able to like there should be a request allowed from the media to say hey we'd like to speak to that official yeah. at the press conference and then for like good a and requirement. bad requirement yeah yeah because you know sometimes the accountability is important we were talking about it in context to Mark weren't we Mark mm-hmm. Goddard yeah because we want to get, get listened regularly but obviously he's you know he's busy travelling and stuff well you know, he had the Colby decision and mm-hmm. then he had the Frankie decision to make that was, gra- that was a great we haven't talked about that fight either have we no that was a great call he left Frankie plenty of time and and the other thing as well, the other thing that people don't, they didn't get get to see. So from my perspective, the fight's ending kind of over there in that corner. A lot of it was happening right in front of me when Frankie was first knocked down and and Zombie took his back. That was all happening right. Yo, in front you of can us. see you through the cage because you're yeah, you're, you're stood, stood up. up. Still, yeah, I was yeah. like <laughs> Richard. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so it's getting a bit warm with this sweater on as well. Let's say it's all right. It smells so, like piss and biscuits now. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I saying? Yeah, so, the, so the, the fight, the end of the fight had happened over there. And as I was watching that happening, I glanced over at the corner to see what was happening in the corner with Mark Henry to see if he was shouting, to see what he was saying. And just as I looked over, Mark Henry had grabbed the towel and was trying to throw the towel in. And as he threw it, the commissioner kind of caught his arm and knocked the towel out of his hand. Because you're not allowed to throw the towel in. It's up to the referee to stop the fight. Your corner man can't stop the fight. But Mark Henry was already in the process of throwing the What towel. a catch, though. Yeah. Commission coming through. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. This is so Mark training. Henry wanted the fight over. Yeah, yeah. So, like, anybody saying that, like... I didn't know you could not, yeah, not throw you the could. towel. No, you're not, so you're not in MMA. But, uh, didn't we have a massive conversation with Mark Goddard about yeah. throwing in towels? Yeah, no, what you what you can do is you can notify the official that's in your corner, I believe, and the official is allowed to notify the red Are they the red coats? No, not that's only in Vegas with the burgundy the red coats, coats okay. yeah. And there are always too many of them in the octagon. Fucking massive, aren't Too many of them, yeah, standing around. I'm going to wear myself a burger. Um, yeah, anyway, accountability for officials, that's a conversation for another time. I think we should get them on, get yeah. them in. Get them in front because the thing is, then they start. Not that you want to build up a celebrity, but like with Herb, Herb at one point arrived on the scene and was like, I know he's been there for a long time and he used to fight, but he got to a point where he was incredible. Mm. Everyone asked for him, and then because I don't think he have ever justifies his actions or is accountable for a lot of stuff, he's never put in the limelight that he's not ever having to check himself to mm. be better the whole time. Whereas you got someone like Mark. And this isn't just biased towards Mark, but Mark is doing seminars on how to be a good referee. So with or without listen, he's constantly, constantly evolving because he's putting himself in IMAF. He's doing the seminars. And I think when you've got that, you're just constantly sharpening your own tools. Mark mm. sharpening his own tools. He'll take that the way it's meant, right? He won't get mad about that. I'm not talking about him playing with his willy. <laughs> but you know what I mean? So... The thing is, I think if you can get him in at the end of like a press conference or whatever, yeah, then yeah. the minute that he's put to bed, I mean, the, the stuff with Colby, no matter what happens, Colby's going to be pissed off. Mm-hmm. No matter what. If it's a decision, he's pissed off at the judges. If it's something else, he's pissed off at them. So no matter what, Mark did the right thing. Yeah. He let the kid have a tantrum. He left him alone and then he, he did like a nice quote. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. But with the with the Frankie, again, he, he, he's just fault, faultless. Absolutely yeah. perfect in my yeah. eyes. Yeah. So, he's tricky, man. I mean, it's... Uh, well, I mean, like, you know, at the Nate before Nate and Masvidal, there was obviously the whole USADA thing, and the press actually got to speak to Jeff Nowitzki, mm-hmm. and he gave a statement. Yeah. I think they they were able to do that, so why couldn't they do that with officials, you know yeah. what I mean? Mm. And I think, Same. and the accountability will also kind of smoke <coughs> out the officials that don't really know what they're doing, because they won't want to speak, or they'll speak and they'll hang themselves because they'll say something stupid. 
They're going to get so bored of speaking to Mario Yamasaki. Aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I think that's a good idea. I think I think the, the the officials should be accountable, and I think they should be able to be interviewed by the media if you know if there's a like every now and then there's a weird scorecard, and you're like, hang on a minute, how did you go thirty twenty seven when that guy clearly lost yeah. two rounds? You know what I mean? Like that happens sometimes, mm-hmm. and it be, it becomes like an ugly witch hunt because then you're on the thing is I'm subscribed to so many different MMA forums, not forums like MMA outlets. Mm-hmm. So on my Insta or Facebook or Twitter, whatever it is, you get like a slightly blurred or skewed vision depending on who's doing it. Yeah, and I think if it was at the official uh, press conference or whatever it is, I don't see that being a bad thing because mm. it just means that. You, you just the, the nice thing I've liked about UFC from day one is it's always been open they've always told you exactly what's going on what's happening like I use the Caleb Starnes example when he fought uh, was it Nate Quarry and he just refused to interact yeah, yeah, yeah. and was running backwards and Joe was saying what he was saying to his corner and he was falling out with his corner and basically Caleb Starnes had just finished that was it I've done mm-hmm. But most places would like either cut it or not show it or like like whitewash over it. Joe was telling you what he was screaming at his corner. And I was like, I fucking love this. This is the closest you can get to any athlete. Like yeah. all dirty laundry, everything's out there. And it's always been in context, so it's been good. But when you get stuff like the officials and the judges and stuff, like the judges are just three names that essentially are always bad when a decision's read. <laughs> Does that make sense? It's not yeah. even like, I remember Cecil Peoples. Yeah. But that's it. Yeah. Because he's got a cool name. Yeah. Cecil Peoples. Cecil Peoples. Pimping it. Don't care. Um, what are you hoping for for 2020? Number oh, one. For Christmas. Number one. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. That's 2009. Uh, what am I hoping for for what? 2020 fight wise. Best fight that you could put together. Just one. Adesanya Jones. <sighs> okay. All right. Let's Ooh. go. Let's go top end and bottom end. As in. Um, top caliber, top caliber, bottom caliber. Well, I'll give you some fights I'd like to see. I'd like to see. I'd like to see Adesanya Jones. I'd like to see. Uh, I'd like to see Connor against um, Masvidal because he's that's the fight he's asking for. I just think I think he's too small personally. But we'll do a we'll do a war room on that. A warp room. Um, uh, what else do I want to see? I'd like to see Tyson Fury step into MMA. I'd like to see him fight Mirchich. I think he's a lot different to any time any other boxer's yeah. ever done it. Mm-hmm. He's a different animal. I'd like to see Cejudo against Cruz. Ooh. I'd like to see... What else? Would you like to see Cejudo against Faber? Mm, not really. Not after what PT Yan did to him. I think I I'd think like he's got PT more of a chance to get Cejudo. a belt now with yeah. it being... I don't mind seeing PT Yan against Marlon Moraes. Yeah, that'd well. be good. Did Cejudo... Tweet after the Aldo fight about giving him it. A- he wants to fight Aldo. Yeah, yeah, because he thinks it's easier. I mean, he thought he won. Yeah, he he yeah, but, but he also thinks it's easier. Probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, there's a few few fights I'd like to see. Uh, I'm interested to see what happens with the with the Connor fight. I want to see Connor fight at lightweight again because I want to see him back in the running for the title. Um, that's the best weight class for him. So I wouldn't mind seeing him fight Gaethje or Poirier. Um, I'd like to see Gaethje against Khabib big time um, I'm interested to see what happens with Khabib Tony obviously um, what else I think Khabib Tony like has to got Zabit. the making to upset the entire year yeah I'd like to see Zabit against Zombie that'd be good over Yari over Yari. Yaya Rodriguez yeah Yari, I put my head down and forgot his name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Yair, Yair, Yair against Yair. Zabit is a bit, is a bit a big, good fight. How would. do you say his name then properly? Yair, 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 Yair. Yair. I want to see Yair, Yair. against Yair. Jeremy Stevens Yair. again. Yeah, <laughs> I just want to see. I want to see Jeremy be able to. <laughs> to be fair, I like, I like Jeremy Stevens. Man, he's a fucking pimp. Mm. Yeah. Or him again. Like if Jose is going to stick around, mind you, he's dropped away, hasn't he? Because obviously he beat Jeremy and. I just like mm. to see Jeremy just Quite climbing sure. back up. Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty dirty, wasn't it? Mm. Did you watch the um, Volcan against Rakic fight? You watched yes. that, yeah. What did? No, you're not. I haven't watched that. Yeah, I watched the. Um, I main watched event. the main event. Yeah. Yeah. There were some people that disagree with that decision. It, I thought it was yeah, kind of close. I feel sorry I thought it for it. Very him. close, but I, I, I agree with the decision. Yeah, I gave made. the last two to same as the Aldo fight. Yeah, I gave the last two to um, Volcan. Yeah. He's had a rough year. He has. He's yeah. had a couple. Yeah. That the curse of DC man. 
Yeah. He got there a bit too quick, didn't he? They said uh, that him against um, the Dominic Reyes at UFC London was wrong. A lot of people disagreed with that mm-hmm. result. Um, yeah, I could have seen that going to Volkan. I yeah. thought Volkan had won. And then... And he wants that rematch back once once Reyes has fought Jones and he also yeah. wants Anthony Smith. Mm. That would be cool. Mm. Anthony Smith would be I do like Smith more fight. interesting fight, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think so. It was a good rematch. Yeah. Though. Because that was a good first fight. Because mm. Volkan was, still had a broken nose, hadn't he? Yeah. So I want to see... Uh, sorry, Aaron. Go on. I want to see... Less spectacular, but I really want to see it now. You've put it in my head. And that is... Makwan Amiakani against Mads Banana. Mm. That'd be a good fight. That'd be a good fight. That would be next. That would yeah, be would. such a fucking be a good, really fight, good fight. Man. Like, yeah. So That's uh, a main event for a fight alone do you know what I mean like for what the fight is that's for a UK it. card yeah that, that's UK, that's the kind of fight you put like fight. to open up a main card in True. Europe yeah because yeah. you want to get the crowd buzzing. that barn burner yeah and that'd be a wild Paul one. Kelly Paul Taylor just yeah. fucking yeah, rock them sock them yeah that was as well but it, what out of all the champions you've got now I know you put a picture out the other day of the end of 2018 and the 2019 the different faces on the podium for the champions oh yeah I did that who do you reckon is most likely to change for 2020? Do you think we're still going to have Stylebender on there as a champ? John Jones, Stipe? I think Volkanovski might change mm. if he fights Holloway again. Do you think? Yeah, mm. okay. I can see that. Yeah. But then, I, then again, I think there's, you know, there's two or three other people in that in that division as well that could potentially mm. be champion. I think Zombie can beat anybody. Yeah, zombie called him I think Zabit can beat anybody and as long as he can catch him in the first three. I do think he's going to struggle. I think his conditioning will be better at lightweight and I think he'll find his way there eventually. Um, I, I want to see uh, Cejudo lose and just fuck off. <laughs> I can see that. Okay. That's his personal opinion. <laughs> so, so, who do you think is most likely to retain Jones and Khabib and Amanda Nunes? Uh, Nunes? I think Nunes is most likely. I think Jones is 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 highly likely as well. I annoyingly feel like Cejudo is highly likely as well. Yeah, I don't know though. I think after the first time against uh, DJ, he destroyed him with one knee yeah. to mm-hmm. the body. I know he's changed a bit, but the whole TJ was so close and that like, kind of controversial. It, it was. F- Man, it was it was just a, a real freakish. We watched that here, didn't we, mm-hmm. with Chris? Mm-hmm. And it it wasn't like a satisfying fuck. You earned that fucking win. Well yeah. done, dude. And then the Marais, the Marais was an impressive win. He was getting whooped. He was fucking getting whooped that first round and made a massive adjustment and fair play. But how much did Marais spent on that first round? Mm-hmm. So I want to see him against someone. If it was vintage Aldo, I put my house on it. But the problem is, time don't stand still for any fucker. Mm. And when you look at Aldo now, compared to WEC, Cub Swanson, Aldo, that's the hunger. Yeah. He is fully fed now, whereas the hunger back in the day was day to day. Yeah. So How about Aldo, Edgar and Faber all in the cage at the same time? Wow. I think if Aldo kicks... We're laughing. With a, with, a, with, a, with a special championship belt hanging above the octagon. There's going to be two guys. It's got to be a long and ladder. And a, ladder. a fucking long be. ladder, that is. <laughs> like money in the bank. If that happened, right, there'll be, there'll be two out of the three that engage first. Mm-hmm. I can't see three people engaging at the same time. No. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. two people, and then there's going to be a guy like not doing anything that could, could then... Uh-huh. Just jump on someone's back, or or the, or the two of them, or the two of them go for one. Oh, and then find right. it out. If yeah. you put Cruz in there, I think Faber and Jose go for Cruz. Yeah, just a raw rumble at bantamweight. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? I Six to Hudo in there, Marlon Moraes. Thirty of them, uh, flyweight. That'd Make be it fucking sick. Imagine a Royal Rumble in the cage. Just <laughs> who's coming down now? Three, two, yeah. one. Yeah, it's Hudo the big boss man. Fucking Sudo. Yeah, but Sudo takes so long coming out and get trampled by every fucker on the way out. You know, he's still signing stuff and like thumbs up selfies. Here's a question: If the BMF belt is in contention in 2020, who ends the year with the BMF belt? I think Connor Does loses it by the end of the year. You reckon? I don't think he touches it. I don't see how he gets it, but I think it's he loses it by the end of the year. You reckon? I Somehow, think, I don't I know how. I think will defend it twice, and I think he'll retain it. I I'd like to. Yeah. I just, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the Connor show. You know, when I saw the bit of the 
previews and like a little bit of the build up it just takes me back to that fucking yeah that rise and love him or hate him there was no denying what he was doing initially I know he went a bit Rocky 3 and he went a bit Clubber Lang but fucking hell just put yourself in that position yeah so to see now him sort of going no fuck it alright and then taking on Cowboy a lot of people are overlooking Cowboy mm. Yeah, I think so. And he's in his fucking think, dangerous. I think man. at welterweight he's got a good he's got a good chance. I think at lightweight he'd struggle against Connor, but yeah. I think at welterweight he's got a good chance. But that soundbite from that big press conference from back in the day when Connor was about to fight Jose after mm. he beat Chad, and he sort of sat there and he's good to go. You're like, fuck, man, this is gonna be fucking. And then now they've got that. That's cool. Did you ever see on Embedded at UFC Boston? Um, I don't know which one it was. The second fight McGregor fought at, on that embedded and he met episode. Cowboy. Yeah, Cowboy. Came yeah, well, they into were dead. Locker, they were dead. Yeah, they were dead jovial at the time, weren't they? And I, I remember seeing that at the time and thinking, oh, they're in different classes. So it's yeah. because the thing is, Cowboy is a massive fan favorite. Tensions high at uh, press conferences as well. Yeah, it sends three hours left still. Jesus, we should start wrapping this. How long we going for? I don't know. It's almost Christmas. Hour and thirty-five. Is that it? Yeah, but it's been recording for like 10 minutes before. I'm getting hungry anyway. Well, I haven't got many other notes. They are random. One of them is... <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember writing this. Ernie walks like an Elvis impersonator. <laughs> That's my dog. Okay. Yeah, give him a follow on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> Toes are actually leg fingers. <laughs> Toes are leg fingers? Yeah. Um, and then Joe saying desperado mode. I don't know if he had a sponsorship with. Oh the, no, he the does. I've, I have. I have heard him say that before. Desperado mode. When it gets like the last round and they've got to get a knockout, he's in desperado mode. Yeah, but, like, but like, I don't think that's right. So, so, yeah, so roganism. <laughs> and then with it being mad winter in England at the minute, one random one that I thought about was, how do you scrape your car? All right, stay straight. Scrape my car for me the other morning. You know, I don't with, scrape with, my car. with an old hotel room key. There you go. Credit so you cost. don't. You I've turn it on cost. and just let it defrost. Uh, no, if I'm honest, I just get some lukewarm tap water and just. Okay, that so is you, the best way. To you do the to dangerous. Get like I might smash my windscreen mode. No, that's if it's hot. Boiling water, yeah. But then I've it just does. Got and if it's water, water, it does refreeze again, depending on the temperature. But that's your. So you use lukewarm water. You do the same. Mm, well, I do, but if I'm in a hurry, then just get the credit card out. Pay someone else to do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jeeves. No, my car's so shit. I get ice on the inside. <laughs> I've had that before. I've yeah. been there, dude. And the crawler had that. <laughs> but Stace scraped my car, and because I'm that fucking anal, she'd left like little fluffy bits around the edge and where she hadn't gone right into the corner. And I was like, oh. And I had to re scrape the whole thing. Mm. Like, I go, every window, like, seal to seal is absolutely scraped and I was thinking to myself at the time this isn't fucking normal no, the, not, not everyone normal. does this <laughs> some people like I drive along and see someone with like the smallest little porthole in the front of their car yeah. and I'm like you're gonna kill a kid I do that I literally I I've got like I've got like a fucking like a fucking face mask size gap on my yeah. windscreen I just like an armoured truck against it. <laughs> yeah. my, it, I have one it's really one, like, low yeah. down it's like a letterbox like, yeah. yeah it's when you start going like that yeah. because you've put the thing on max and you're like nah, boom, boom, uh, yeah. nah it's just a dog <laughs> No. Yeah, I've got no, I've got a, I've got a good selection of hotel room keys, so I always produce one of them from my from my pocket. Have none of you got scrapers? That could have been the best Man, Christmas I present. I, I, I bought one last year, especially like, for it. That is the biggest like mum present from Aldi, but I could have I could have got straight. you some new car mats scraper with and a, a scraper, a scraper with a glove on it. They're fucking mint. Yeah. Trust me, don't laugh at them, man. You know when you, you know we'll when you scrape. What about next year on full reptiles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. Do some full reptiles. I have never gloves. ever been in a position. To, to, to do it we can have a mystery tepid by the time he wakes bottle. up the fucking whole world's defrosted yeah <laughs> <laughs> Alaska's Me. permafrost is good. wait a minute what? I get up at a reasonable time what, well have you got some dirt to dish what's considered a reasonable time uh, an hour before you <laughs> an hour before <laughs> me whatever time that is what have you been doing in that room sleeping because I've been up like, before I feel like I get up at about anywhere from nine to half ten uh -huh. And I feel like you probably get up about 11, 12. <laughs> about half 10, 11 o'clock yeah. usually, yeah. 11 o'clock's good for me. But then I'm up late. Three hours left. So am I. Hey? Yeah, yeah. it all depends on when yeah, you Yeah, you're playing bedroom, Fortnite you know? though, aren't you? It's not, you know. I'm keeping my mind just super active and pulsating. Is that right? Pulsating. 
Paul I can't wait for that him. Connor and Cowboy press conference poof, snapshot. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm going to get, I need some food. Right. All good? Let's get All you good, fed. Man. All good. Have a great Christmas. Yeah, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Happy New Year. We'll do a podcast next week. Might, maybe we'll do one from Amsterdam. There you That'd go. That'd be pretty cool. Kind of FaceTime me. With Hi, right, boys. Yeah. 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 Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cool. All Thanks good? a lot. All good, all good. Merry Christmas, everyone. Take it Merry easy. Bye-bye. Take care.